And then the green people went to work on the can. Ban the can, ban the can. You probably don't remember that. I remember some of the bans and deposits that came into well, the idea. Well, there were, idea. No, there were no deposits on tin cans. Oh, that's right. that's right. The brewing industry and its infinite wisdom and the soft drink industry as well had a hard and fast policy against taking any responsibility for their used beverage containers. They weren't going to have anything to do with the recycling or anything. It wasn't their responsibility. And um, the, tin, the tin carbonated beverage can was doomed. There's no way it could have survived. And um, so what we were doing is just sort of had our looking for an alternative. And a guy came to my office by the name of Lou Bronstein. He had been referred to me by a friend of mine in Hawaii, Honolulu, Aaron Marcus. Aaron had a, was in charge of a small brewery over there by the name of the Primo Brewery. Oh, well. And, uh, I know, well, I'm from Hawaii, so. Yeah. You know the Primo Brewery? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm from Hawaii, so. <laughs> what, a, what, a, what a miserable operation that was. Yeah. <laughs> but anyway, Aaron was a friend, and he had referred this Lou Bronstein to me. Lou was a typical promoter, presumably had made and lost four fortunes. I, I never bothered to check him out. But... Uh, he had the concept of the aluminum can. He had been all over the industry in this country, AB, a uh, Pabst, and the big breweries in the East, uh, Liebman, Schaefer, and so forth, and uh, Ballantyne. Nobody was interested. And he happened to be a friend of this Aaron Burrs in California. Well, Primo needed cans <laughs> in the worst way. <laughs> and so I guess Aaron Berg, Aaron um, picked up his ears and uh, referred uh, Lou to me. And he had done a remarkable job of checking out the various equipment available, and his idea was the impact extrusion. Do you know the d difference between impact extrusion and the DNI. Yeah. DNI? Impact extrusion. Well, it got my attention because I saw the possibility of a, uh, <coughs> excuse me, of a uh, alternative that made some sense because there would be enough intrinsic value in the aluminum can that people would pick it up mm -hmm. and recycle it. So it seemed to me to be the logical salvation. So I'm off to Europe with Lou Bronstein for five weeks, traveling around in uh, Germany, Italy, Swiss, Swiss, Switzerland, picking up little bits and pieces of the impact extrusion industry, which was flourishing as far as two space tubes were concerned, and uh, condiment tubes. And it made good sense to me. One of my visits was at the uh, aluminum uh, of what, Canadian Alcan, along with the Company of Canada, in their research laboratory in Banbury, England. And there I saw a press 
draw an iron press that had been designed and built by a Swiss engineer by the name of Ed Mater. And it took a disc of aluminum, I'd say about eight inches in diameter. You dropped that down there and it just banged, came up with a perfect can. And I was impressed, but the problem is, or was, that that disc had to be differentially annealed. Now take a disc like that and try to design it so that the outside is soft, the center is hard. It ain't easy. And uh, also, how do you feed discs? Into a, <laughs> these you had to re basically put them in with my <laughs> <laughs> one at a time. And uh, so they told me at Vanbury, at the uh, laboratories there, that uh, a guy named Bob Hammer, I remember, very nice guy. He said, "This is the way it should be done," but it's not. The technique is not ready yet. He said, stay with the impact extrusion, which I did, excuse me, came back to this country and uh, talked my uh, brothers and father into setting up a little aluminum can line. And they humored me by okay. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I assume it was going to be easy. Um, impact extrusion requires what they call a slug. Mm -hmm. And uh, the brewery needed a seven ounce can. So we decided to start small with a seven ounce line. And I remember getting hold of uh, Aluminum Company of America, Alcoa, and asking them to quote on a ten of slugs. We got a reply back. We don't we don't sell slugs by a ton. We sell them by the hundred pounds. <laughs> <laughs> I needed them by the time. And uh, aluminum uh, was then the market price of aluminum was 16 cents a pound. And they quoted me 76 cents on those slugs, which just blew the economics of the thing out of the water. So when we got back there, instead of setting up a can, the first thing I had to do was set up a slug line. Oh, really? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and uh, we spent the first two, two uh, years of our development creating slugs. And was that golden aluminum? Yeah, wow. it was golden aluminum. And uh, so we had a little continuous caster there that we designed and um, rolled it out to the proper gauge, stamped out the slugs, lubricated them and so forth. So we had slugs. And then the impact extrusion, we got that thing going and it took us four years to get that thing put together we got a little seven ounce line going for the brewery. <clears throat> Everybody was very excited. The container was just gobbled up in the market. 